So I, I think that's it. Yeah, cool. And I'll share my screen. Uh, is that visible? Yes. Great. So yeah, I will be presenting my, uh, uh, what I've done is my master's thesis. So briefly, I've developed a system for interacting with and managing trust with the purpose of using it as uh, to implement the subjective and uh, trust-based moderation system. But let's come back to that though, and instead start by looking at the structure of this presentation. And before I get started, I just want to thank you, Juan and Carly Eric, for agreeing to take on this unusual thesis project. So uh, thank you. But let's get to the structure here. So I'll begin with an introduction where I give a bird's eye overview of what I've done in my thesis. I'll continue with the background, or well, present the stuff that you needed to understand the previous introduction. We'll go on to what I've actually done, uh, where I very briefly present the system that I'm proposing my thesis. We'll have a live demo, which will hopefully work, and I'll try to wrap everything up with a conclusion. What won't be covered, however, is the theory of how distributed systems work. I won't talk about any details of how distributed chat systems work. I will mention them, however. And I also won't talk that much about how the proposed system is uh, resistant against tampering, which it is. And it, you just have to read my thesis if you want to know more of that, because I detail them in, uh, yeah, extensively there. So the introduction. Basically what I've done is I've come up with an effective and trust-based moderation system that works for peer-to-peer -peer chat systems as well as traditional ones. And if you're feeling a bit lost, uh, don't worry, I'll bring everyone up to speed in the next section. And the problem statement that I investigated was uh, the question we have here, which is how can we efficiently hide malicious participants in a distributed chat system? And at a glance, uh, this is what I've done. We use a distributed chat system for identities and for trust propagation. And then we let the people inside this distributed chat system assign trust to whoever they trust. So every participant ends up with a personal trust graph based on transitive trust assignments. And what I mean by transitive trust is the following. If I trust Alice and Alice trusts Bob, then I transitively trust Bob through Alice. So that's kind of what transitive trust means in this context. So using uh, this personal trust graph, we can calculate the subjective trust rank for each uh, person in every participant's per uh, personal trust graph. And then we use these calculated trust ranks to drive highly trusted participants. And when these highly trusted participants block malicious ones, then we mirror those actions. But let's kind of take a step back and get into the background. And we'll start with chat systems, which is the core that everything in the thesis uh, revolves around. And um, the definition I kind of use is a network and primarily text-based uh, communication system with clear boundaries. And if you kind of step back from the stodgy definition, we kind of understand intuitively, intuitively what I mean. It's kind of like a Facebook group or another example is uh, IRC and IRC channels. Even stuff like social media, like Twitter or an even better example is Mastodon. And what I focused on with my thesis was the moderation aspect of chat systems. So moderation is a tool you use to kind of keep your chat community safe from abuse. It's what you do when the chat goes bad. And in a typical chat system, we have regular people just chatting away normally, and I call them chat participants. In addition to the chat participants, there's a set of participants with elevated powers in the chat system. And these are the admins or moderators. And for the rest of this presentation, I'll just combine the two and call them moderators. What moderators do is essentially kick out malicious participants. So malicious participants are bad actors in the chat system, like spam bots trying to get you to click weird links or people posting offensive images, for example. And broadly speaking, what I call a malicious participant is a chat participant that is regarded as unwelcome by the entirety of the rest of the chat group. And one last thing, normally these moderators I just talked about have been granted their powers from the beginning of the particular chat group, if I'm allowed to oversimplify. And the server hosting the chat system keeps track of which participants are moderators and therefore allowed to kick people out. So let's just kind of keep these roles in mind and move on. So even more particularly, my thesis focuses on a subset of chat systems that I call distributed chat systems. And since I don't have time to go in depth on what these are, 
this overview, overview I'm about to give is uh, greatly simplified, but it's a topic that I'm very interested in and basically the original reason for this thesis. So distributed chat systems work in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. People talk directly with each other using their computers instead of through a server like with Facebook. Typically, all the messages that you see in this system are actually stored on your own computer. And these stored messages are also tamper-proof, meaning someone can't change a post I've made where I say, I'm hungry, to instead say, I don't like food, which is just a blatant lie. And in my thesis, I detail two examples of distributed chat systems. Uh, the first one is Secure Skullbot, and the second one is Cabal. And Cabal is a chat project that I'm working on with a couple of friends. As part of the thesis, I've extended Cabal with a proof of concept moderation system, which we'll see in the demo. But just kind of to be clear, the demo isn't shown Cabal itself. It's just using its guts to implement a chat system. So if we consider two things, the first being the structure of having moderators, and the second being the just described distributed chat systems, we can kind of realize two problems. And the first one is, what if the moderator is the issue? What if the malicious participant and the moderator are one and the same? In traditional chat systems, you either have to suck it up and just live with that, or you have to leave the chat system, like the Facebook group. And I don't really think any of those alternatives are that appealing. Now, the second problem is, what if there's no central server? And this is the case with the distributed chat system I just talked about. How do you know who is a moderator? Do you just go around asking people? And what happens if you ask someone and they're a malicious participant? Because they'll happily say, yep, and then proceed to just like kick everyone. So how do we solve these problems? And what I ended up with was we solved them with trust. But what is trust? I found this really nice definition uh, through doing my literature research. And it's this. Trust is the extent to which one party is willing to depend on something or somebody in a given situation with a, rel with a feeling of relative security, even though negative consequences are possible. And I like this quote because it basically says that trust is something that we can rely on while also being realistic about the possibility that mistakes or accidents can happen. So how do we represent trust for computers? What I came up with during my work with the thesis is something I'm calling computational trust facets. And they are inspired by reading the, the, the trust literature as well as doing some thinking on my own. And the idea of these trust facets is that they enable people to represent who they trust, how much they trust them, and in which area of life the trust is limited to. So when one person trusts another by using these computational trust facets, I call that a trust assignment. So we have the trust source, which is the entity or the person doing the trusting. And each person that issues a trust assignment is from their point of view, the trust source for that trust assignment. Next, we have the trust destination, the person being trusted. And then we have the trust area, and this is important to include because we, we trust people different amounts depending on the context. I might trust my mom a lot for recipe recommendations, but not at all when it comes to music recommendations, where I instead trust my dad quite a bit. And finally, we have the trust amount or the trust weight. And for my system, TrustNet, the trust weight is defined between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. And you can kind of think about it in terms of 0 to 100%. Now, if it seems harsh, to kind of do this thing of assigning trust to one another, think about more in terms of, oops, <laughs> uh, trust as similarity in judgments. Let's see. Uh, like, I'm not saying if you're a bad person or not, I'm just saying like, this is how similar we are within this certain domain. So let's kind of step back to the chat systems we talked about and the problems there and consider it using a trust-based moderation system and how it can solve those problems. So in a trust-based moderation system, we, who can moderate on your behalf is contingent on whether you regard them as trusted or not. So it's kind of inherently subjective as well. Who I trust will be different from who you trust and so on. So what if the, pro the moderator's issue? Well, we just revoke the trust for the problematic moderator and suddenly their actions don't have any effect on us anymore. And what if there's no central server? Well, we just share the trust directly between people, peer to peer. So you might be thinking, yeah, that's great, but how do we actually do this in practice, Alex? Uh, to which I say Appleseed. Now Appleseed is an algorithm proposed in the mid 2000s. 
by Kai Niklas Ziegler and Geo Glausen. And basically, Appleseed makes it possible to take a group of nodes, which have various trust relations to each other, look at the group from the view of a single node, and then rank each of the other nodes according to how trusted they are as seen from that node. So in Appleseed, the derived trust ranking is ordered so that the most trusted node, meaning that the node with the highest trust is at the top of the list and the least trusted node, but still trusted is at the bottom. In other words, it's an algorithm for subjective trust computation. It outputs a subjective trust ranking with the, the highest node at the top and the lowest at the bottom. It's iterative and it's also guaranteed to converge. So Appleseed works by taking a few things into account, which I've listed here. Uh, so to the right, we have a trust graph and the red circle, uh, I think you can see my mouse pointer here, is the trust source and the subjective perspective we're viewing from. The trust source trusts three nodes directly, that, 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 as signified by the solid lines, but it also trusts four more nodes indirectly or transitively. So through this node, and then these two through that node, and then that one. Uh, so these nodes are connected by their trust assignments. Things like, I trust you 50%, the stuff I just talked about with the computational trust facets. So we have a trust source and we have a trust graph. But what's this like initial energy that I list? Uh, and the initial energy is core to how Appleseed works. Basically, Appleseed works by taking a finite amount of energy and then dumping it at the trust source and letting it spread across the trust graph along these pathways of trust. So nodes with higher trust weights incoming to them will end up uh, receiving more of the incoming trust. Uh, and uh, we can see that I have a few numbers here in parentheses, and these are the kind of like the defaults recommended by the Appleseed authors. So we can kind of see here the amount of trust for any participant at the current iteration. So it, it will be going through loops and loops and loops until it's converged uh, is defined by this basically. It's the current trust is equal to the previous trust plus a portion of the incoming trust. So we have this thing called the spreading coefficient and the spreading coefficient basically determines how much of the incoming energy each node is allowed to keep. Respectively, it's also saying how much it will pass on to the other nodes. So in this case, it's defined between zero and 1.0 or again, zero to hundred percent. And it says here, we, we're allowed to keep one minus D, which is one minus 0 0.85, or it's 0 0.15. So we're allowed to keep 15% if we use this default and assign that to our trust rank. This final thing we have called the convergence, uh, convergence threshold, really tricky to say, basically lets us know when we've found the final ranking. And it does this by essentially saying, if the largest uh, amount of change in the most recent iteration is less than T, the convergence threshold, then we're done. So Appleseed isn't perfect, of course. It has a few drawbacks. And the authors in the paper mentioned that retrieving the trust information is uh, a performance bottleneck. Because this was developed in the mid-2000s, they were envisioning that you're kind of getting your trust information from the web somehow. Uh, but the most important thing that was really hard was it's difficult to use these computer rankings in practice. Because, so let's say you get this ranking of everyone who's in your trust graph connected to you by some way. So you have a trust rank of nodes with a lot of trust and you, then you also have nodes with essentially meaningless amounts of trust. And if you look at this ranking, like just being a human being and you can see the numbers like, okay, big numbers, good, smaller numbers, not so good. But where do you kind of make the cut? Where do you draw the line saying everyone, everything above this node is regarded, regarded as highly trusted and everything below is irrelevant. Uh, and a couple of other drawbacks is it's missing a robust distrust notion and it doesn't also uh, capture this notion of a trust area. So like music recommendations and uh, recipe recommendations, which is where my work comes in. Uh, so Trustnet uses Appleseed to compute uh, trust rankings. And to be clear, I dug up Appleseed as part of my literature research and then implemented it from scratch during the thesis. It also combines uh, distributed chat systems with Appleseed to solve this bottleneck of retrieving trust statements. Because with uh, distributed chat systems, all of the information is on your computer. So you're just reading directly from your computer, which is really fast. To solve this problem of where do we make the cut, we use a technique called clustering with the k-means clustering algorithm to kind of split the ranking into three groups and 
everything within one group is supposed to be similar, basically. And then we take the two largest groups and we use those because those would contain the highest rankings. And then we remove the smallest group because that's just kind of irrelevant noise. And then we use uh, this, these two groups, which we merge into one, to create the highly trusted participants grouping. And then we regard those as moderators. And when they block a malicious participant, since we trust them, we automatically do the same action. And we can kind of see where Trustnet fits in. When we have the trust system, which passes people assigned trust assignments, it keeps track of who has done that, passes it to Trustnet. Trustnet then takes the trust assignments, creates a trust graph. Appleseed uses the trust graph to find the rankings. Trustnet then, uh, yeah, separates the rankings uh, using the clustering technique to get the trusted peers, which are then used for moderation. Trustnet also adds support for these trust areas and a much simpler and robust trust system. But importantly, it simplifies interaction with Appleseed through a simple API and takes care of edge cases where Appleseed's rankings fail, which I'll try to show in the demo. So to check what, what, that what I made was actually useful, we performed an evaluation. Uh, so I simulated a chat system of 1,000 nodes, and then we measured two things. We measured the amounts of blocks required to hide one malicious participant for all 1,000 nodes in the simulated chat system. And then we also measured the amount of actions required to hide one malicious participant for all 1,000 nodes. And an action is defined as either one of these blocks or a trust assignment. Now to have something to measure against, a baseline, we also defined an alternate moderation system, which I'll call the naive moderation system. And in the naive moderation system, each node has to individually block the malicious participant. So there's no delegation going on with using moderators or trusted participants. And this is actually a typical moderation system for distributed chat systems. And we can see the results here. And lower here is better, and the yellow is Trustnet and the red here is the naive system. And we can see that uh, Trustnet has a 73% improvement of the naive system, which means that to accomplish this task of blocking the one uh, troll or malicious participant, we, we required 73% 73 fewer, 73 fewer blocks. So the other uh, metric we had was actions. And we can see that it starts out a bit uh, slower here where because we need to have a trust graph, we, we have kind of this upfront cost in, in the simulation in terms of actions. We can see though that after five malicious participants have been blocked, then Trustnet begins to outperform the, even the naive moderation system. So uh, that was a lot of talking. Uh, I figured I'd try to show you all the demo of Trustnet in action. So as part of the thesis, I also developed a tool using, to test using Trustnet as a proof of concept moderation system. Uh, that uses Cabal. So I'll switch to that now and just refresh because you never know. And then resize. All right. So this should be good enough. Uh, so this is you. And this is basically the node. And this, this, um, this thing here is the trust graph. And at the moment, the chat system is just this node called you. So it's very empty. To the right here, we'll have the chat log, but since there's no one talking, it's empty. And down here, we'll see kind of stats and uh, metrics that I just talked about. We'll see who we're trusting. We'll see who we're blocking and because, through whom we're blocking, actually. Here's where we will see the Appleseed rankings, and here's where we'll see the most trusted participants based on the rankings. But it's kind of like hard to understand anything here, so let's add a few participants. So we have you one and Carly Eric here. Um, and we can kind of drag people around. So let's say I, just to kind of start the example, I, uh, I like me and you one would talk a lot during the thesis. So when it comes to moderation, and this is the trust area we're caring about in this demo, we're pretty similar. So we can see here, you one uh, gets this trust ranking, he's our most trusted, and we can see it's reflected here as well. So let's say that you one and Carly Eric have a fight, Carly Eric forgets the Fika, and you one's like, okay, Coleric, you're blocked. So we can see Coleric is blocked here via himself. But also, interestingly, it, I get the block via you one. Now, if I'm like, nah, I don't really trust you one anymore. He's, he's abusing his powers, then the block is removed from me. But of course, I mean, it turns out that the Fika was there all along. So let's, let's 
everything's fine. But let's kind of create a more interesting trust graph here and add some more participants. Okay. So, and then let's have you one trust Valentine quite a lot. And let's have Cardinary trust Edmund a bit. So we can kind of see this messy graph here. Uh, and we can see the rankings. So I trust you one and Carleric uh, the same, which is reflecting the rankings. Valentine is uh, trusted quite a lot by someone I trust quite a lot, which means that she's actually ending up in my most trusted participants here. However, Edmund, who, who's only being trusted like, uh, there's some overlap. He's even farther away from me than Carleric, which you can see here, me, Carleric, Edmund. So he's actually not getting into my most trusted participants. So if Edmund were to block, uh, let's say, yeah, you won, it's, it's not going to end up here. Whereas if Valentine was, for some reason, then it would actually end up here because those things are kind of separate. But more interestingly, we have a troll here. And the troll is kind of this you know, bad person, the, bad, the malicious participant. So let's add some chat logs here. And this is based on one of like scraped from one of my favorite books uh, by Alexandre Dumas. So let's let's have Valentine block the troll. And we can see, yeah, this is actually being a uh, block now. But however, let's say that my trust for Valentine, maybe I've had a bad experience with Valentine. And I can't really affect who she blocks. Like, what if she blocks you one? Well. And let's have you one talk maybe. Well, now that's happening. I don't really want that to happen. I can't re reverse her like action there, but I can say I don't trust her. In which case, everything that has with Valentine to do is being nullified at my point before it's passed in. We can see that in the rankings as well. She's been completely removed here, but maybe it was just a misunderstanding. So we can see those kind of things. We can also see stuff like where if we try to kind of make this a bit longer. We have Valentine trust the troll as similar. So we're getting this kind of longish trust link. Well, it's kind of messy though. Sorry about that. Force graphs. Uh, so we have, I trust you one, you want to trust Valentine, Valentine trust the troll. But since the troll is so far away, even though I'm trusting you one a lot, you want trusting Valentine a lot and Valentine is trusting the troll a lot. The troll is not ending up in my most trusted participants because of how the uh, ranking is skewed. It's skewed towards proximity. But if, however, more people were to trust the troll, then it would actually end up here. So it kind of all comes down to who you trust. Uh, and I think that's basically all I wanted to show with the, the demo. Oh yeah, wait, actually I wanted to show, let's see here, uh, that this is actually like, there's actually stuff happening in the background as well. Like this is not just a fancy web demo. We can see Apple seed here. It's iterating. Uh, 630 is me. I don't have any trust because I'm just the trust source. We can see someone called CA9. Let's see if that was here. Is it troll? Yeah. So we can see their trust here increasing until the change is so small that we kind of just terminate. And that took 67 iterations. Um, so yeah, and then we see we get the rankings and we want to know the most trusted for this participant, which is me. And we take the rankings, we split them into groups and we see these are the groups with the most trusted. It's four of them. And we can also like try to map here, 25, 32, 67, 67. Yep, that makes sense. And then we return that. So that's basically the demo and Let's try to wrap it all up before I run out of time. Uh, so yeah, so what we saw here was I was a user in a browser uh, interacting with an HTTP server, which had a WebSocket server. And the WebSocket server was controlling each of the Cabal nodes, which were communicating with each other. Because it's, it was kind of like, how do we simulate having real people? Well, we need to kind of tell people to start doing things, doing the posting. And then we also have this trustnet component, which we're communicating with. So to kind of wrap it all up, uh, that's how trustnet works. Uh, some other pop like applications on my thesis would be to kind of 
we saw this dynamic block list behavior in the demo, but you could also do stuff like filtered views where if you're using a social network and you're feeling a bit like vulnerable uh, sometime, maybe you only want to restrict views like messages from people who you trust. We could also have better recommendations like in a domain of music recommendations uh, where the trust rate would be similarity in music taste, then I can assign, okay, I trust these people and then they trust other people. So I end up with this kind of group of people who have a similar music taste as me and use whoever they recommend as artists to listen to. Uh, but yeah, that was everything I wanted to talk about. So um, that's all for me. Thanks. Presentation, can you hear me now? Yeah. I don't know. Um, let's see. Thanks for a very interesting presentation, Alex. Um, do we have any questions from, from um, the audience um, and from Caleric? I think Frida Heskebeck has a question. Yes, uh, I really liked your demonstration. Uh, but when you showed that uh, Valentine blocked U1, then U1 disappeared from your view. Isn't that a problem? Because you trusted U1 more than you trusted Valentine. Valentine was just a bonus that you got from U1. And then when Valentine took away U1, you lost him. Because, but, but it's actually him that you trust. Yeah, so I mean, like, I think that's more of a, that's like super true. Um, but basically, I think that's more of a concern in the actual moderation system that someone uses. Like, for example, here, I could have probably just like disregarded that. Um, but tr trust wise, like, it doesn't really, like, the blocking or the action you do doesn't really mm -hmm. affect the trust graph necessarily. Like, I could have someone that I, trust but maybe i just want to momentarily mute them because they're posting lots of politics stuff but i mean yeah for mm -hmm. sure like you could kind of do a thing where like at the moment i basically just say if you're in the trusted group then that's great but you could also kind of also rank them according to okay who has the like who has like the uh, precedence in which case you one had the precedence within the trusted group over valentine but okay. right now in the okay. demo i just didn't make that distinction but yeah it's true okay okay Nice. Interesting. Thanks. Do we have any other questions? I have quite a lot of questions, of the, but we can take the ones that have, don't we have, uh, no, that's maybe not a question. I'm not sure. Nils has done something. Applause. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a question. Um, uh, this uh, trust iteration is done by Appleseed. Uh, what about timing and complexity? Let's say that you have a very large uh, network of chat participants. Uh, uh, I mean, how large can it be before the iteration time or the number of iteration times the time for an iteration starts uh, playing a role? Um, so like in my test where I had a thousand nodes, like I don't think it ever went over a hundred iterations. And uh, I haven't actually like verified the, the proof that the authors have in their paper, but basically they say it's always guaranteed to converge. So, and what they also make the point of is that regardless of how large of a network they had, the, the bottleneck wasn't the iteration or the computation. It was this act of actually having to get the information from a web server. Okay. Uh, what would happen if, I mean, this is a distributed systems, asynchronous systems, you have users uh, entering uh, trust uh, information uh, independently of each other. What happens if a user enters something while the iterations from a previous change is ongoing, so to say? Could there be some real-time synchronization problems? Yeah, so basically what I imagine we can do there is especially with stuff like Secure Scuttlebutt, where you, you start the application and you're kind of just like, you don't know how many messages are out there yet. So you're just pulling down stuff. And like sometimes you can be, if you've been gone for a week, it can be thousands of messages. 
So what I would do in that case is uh, it's also, this is more of like an application concern because what you do is you pass, I, trust that takes is kind of like the group of all of the trust assignments you want to operate on. So I kind of sidestep all of those issues and leave it up to application developers. But in that case, what I would say is you just throttle it so that if we get a new kind of update from secure scuttle, but like, oh, there's a new post, we reset this kind of timer. And we only like actually, we don't try to recompute Trustnet if we haven't received a message that, like we only recompute when we see, oh, this message is actually related to trust, not just any random message. So we do that and we also, yeah, just have a timer. Maybe it's, we can set it to one minute. It doesn't really have to be uh, like, that's, it's not that time sensitive necessarily. Uh, so yeah, after one minute has elapsed and there are no tr new trust assignments, then we take the group of trust assignments we know of and we dump it into Trustnet and Trustnet does its computation. Okay. Uh, then I have a comment on a thing you write in your thesis. You have a citation from a paper by Guha et al, 2004. Uh, and you cite that a couple of times. And the idea behind this is that even a small amount of distrust can provide better judgments about trust, but you really never explain why distrust is useful. Can you do that intuitively? Uh, I didn't do it in the paper or I didn't do it in the presentation. I didn't, I'm not sure you did it in the report or I, I'm just... Yeah, okay. I think I have a small section, but maybe I didn't... Maybe I just skimmed that. Uh, but so why, is, why is this trust good? Yeah, well, so in this case, well, we all have personal experiences of like, well, there's, I have a social network of friends and there are people there that I trust more and there are people I don't trust as much, but I mean, we're still friends. So in the case that I showed here where I'm still a friend with Valentine, even if I say I distrust her judgment when it comes to moderation. So it kind of just like, that's basically the purpose. It's kind of like uh, limiting the bad effects of transitivity is what I would say. So when you can see that there's someone who you've had a bad experience with, we use this kind of local only distrust where you say, okay, let's just discard everything that has with this person to do. But again, it's not because I think they're a bad person. We just don't really match up. We're not similar at all in this trust domain. And I know that from prior experience. Um, so I, I get that's kind of my take on why distrust is uh, important. Okay. Yeah, I don't really have that many more questions. I mean, my general comment is, is that this is a very, very, very good uh, master thesis and an, an unusually good master thesis. And also the report is very good. Uh, I only have one little thing that it would be good if you could add to the report, and that is some example. I mean, with Alice Bob and a troll and Johan and Kaleri. Mm. Similar to what you did in your demo now, but just small example on pen and paper, what happens. That's yeah. basically the only thing that I think is missing from the report. And the presentation was excellent, so. Thank you. So I'm done with my uh, criticism. Here. So thanks, colleague. Um, if we don't have any, do we have any further questions uh, from, the, from the audience? Um, Maybe some family and friends who have some uh, questions about the work. You know, it's... If not, then I thank uh, Alex and Kolejek for, for today. Uh, and I agree with Kolejek. This has been a very nice uh, mass thesis. I'm very happy with the result. I think you've done very well. And uh, well, well, hope to see you somewhere in real life soon. <laughs> but till then, good luck and thank you very much. And uh, with that, I close the meeting. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you all for coming. Okay.